Grab a cup of tea or a glass of wine and tune in for inspired conversations with publisher Linda Joy. On Tuesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern, Linda creates sacred space for leading female luminaries, empowering authors, heart-centered female entrepreneurs, coaches, and healers. A soulful venue where guests openly share the fears and obstacles they've overcome, wisdom and lessons learned, and the personal journey that led them to the transformational work they do in the world. Inspired conversations to empower you on your path to authentic, soulful living. Welcome to Inspired Conversations. I'm your host, Linda Joy, publisher of Aspire Magazine and the best-selling publisher at inspiredlivingpublishing.com. You know, we've all heard stories of women who have overcome seemingly unsurmountable obstacles or maybe life throw, threw them a curveball. Today's guest got hit with both of those. Joining me today, Sarah Centrella will inspire you with her story of transformation and most importantly how that story became the fuel that led her to the transformational work she is doing in the world today to support other women in breaking through their blocks and believing in the power of possibility. Sarah Centrella is the author of the number one best-selling self-help book, Hustle, Believe, Receive, an eight-step plan to changing your life and living your dream. She's also a master life coach who's worked with professional athletes, celebrities, and people from around the world, helping them live their dreams. Sarah is a contributor for several major sites, including Elite Daily, Mind Valley, Life Hack, and Naomi. She shares her story and message of change with audiences of all sizes, including hosting workshops and retreats. She's been interviewed by ABC News and Steve Harvey, featured in the New York Times, OK Magazine, and Good Morning America, among many others. Welcome, Sarah. Thank you so much, Linda Joy, for having me. I'm uh, very honored to get this opportunity to speak with you. Well, as we were talking about, uh, Sarah and I were chatting off air a few moments ago, and I said, you know, I really wanted to have you on the show, Sarah, because your story is like mine and so many others. And I shared with Sarah that I was a single welfare mom many years ago. And so I think that's why your story of perseverance really touched me. And I'm so excited to have you on the show because, Sarah, like you know, there's many other women who may find themselves in circumstances right in this moment who may believe that there is no other way. And you and I both know there is. Yes. There definitely is, and when you uh, you and I were talking about your story, it just gives me so much hope to speak to other women who have been through similar circumstances um, that I've been through, and, you know, my journey is ever-evolving, as all of ours are, um, but my personal one really started, and everything actually really started on um, an afternoon in September of '09. Uh And that was the day that I found out my husband and high school sweetheart, uh, we had been married for eight years and had three very small children, um, two of which were twins that were about a year old, I found out that he had been having um, an affair. And that ended my marriage and the world as I knew it. It ended kind of every dream I thought I ever had, um, literally in an an instant. Uh, It was done and, and over with. And there was kind of a moment in all of that, I guess, you know, upheaval and darkness and tragedy, if you will, uh, where in the very back of my mind, as I'm sitting there thinking, you know, how do you get past this? How do you live? How do you (laughs) wake up tomorrow? You know, um, there's this little kind of voice that said, you know, you have to start over clearly, like, this is a whole new game. So, why not make something better than what you had? And it was just, I don't know how else to explain it other than it was what kind of saved my life. Um, This thought, this little thought, this little seed of hope um, that I wound up starting to build on as I began to rebuild my life over the next year and, you know, years to come after that. Um, But that hope just grew. The more I thought about it, the more I let it marinate, the more I thought, why would I, you know, create something 
that I already had. Why not go after those childhood dreams? You know, why not live the type of life that I kind of always secretly hoped or wished that I could? And I think all of us carry dreams that maybe we even had as children that we've shoved far, far away um, because they didn't match what reality was or they didn't make sense or they were unrealistic or whatnot. Um, and for me, it was kind of those that bubbled to the top that said, you have nothing to lose. <laughs> you have no more pride. You know, I, I was on welfare um, for most of that first year as I was trying to get back on my feet. And the one thing I did have was this thought and this hope that I wound up turning into action, um, which wound up really changing my life. And what I'm curious is, I, I know you you went through this really deep struggle. You had to accept help from a friend, you know, near the holidays and mm -hmm. stuff. And then, like yeah. me, you were on welfare for a while. And I was so grateful at the time that I had welfare to fall back on or I would have been homeless, right? Right, right. So when, when that little seed was planted in your heart, how did you start taking steps to move forward? Because you landed up in a, in a powerful job, right? So here you are. Yeah. You know, as a successful corporate executive serving as a VP of Director of Business Development for over seven years, but how did you go from this wounded woman really yes. struggling just to exist to even get in that position? No, that's such a great question. Um, and I think two things. Before, so I was a stay-at-home mom when uh, this whole situation happened, but two years prior to that, I had, you know, finally kind of wrapped up school and was starting out at the bottom of the corporate sales ladder, right, as the inside salesperson who just was on the phone making cold calls all day. Um, and, I, you know, I credit that, even though it was very much grunt work, um, for at least kind of giving me the option to go try and make a career for myself. So that's basically what I was uh, had decided as I sat down and moved into my tiny little apartment after we sold everything sitting there thinking, this is the only job that I can go after. I have to go over, I have to go after ones that are way, that I'm way underqualified for, because otherwise I wouldn't be able to pay daycare and rent. I mean, there was just, there was absolutely no way. Um, and so I immediately started going out for jobs that were the next level to what I was qualified for, just saying, I'm going to, I'll figure it out. You know, I'll get on the job, I'll figure it out. I have determination. And there's something about when you don't have a safety net and you've lost everything and you're doing it by yourself for the first time, you have survival instincts. You know, I think a lot of that really kicked in into this insane determination uh, and dedication that I don't think I probably ever had before this, honestly. I was kind of one of those people who had a great idea, would do it for a while and then would quit and then, you know, made excuses and all of that stuff. So a lot of this was new to me and I, I think having the responsibility of taking care of three babies, like I said, my twins were a year, my son was five at the time, um, put the fear of God in you, <laughs> for, for lack of a better uh, you know, thing to say, because it's, it's on you. If your kids don't eat, that's your fault. You got to figure it out. So, um, so I did. I went out for uh, account level positions, which were an outside sales position, um, and me forever it took me like three months to get a job because this was 2009 when no one was getting a job um and 2008 i'm sorry and uh so when i did it was i knew i was like if someone just gives me a shot i am going to write out my plan and build a career and a life um and so i made it known in my interviews you know i remember the first, the job that you're speaking of where I was um, eventually became the vice president of, of sales, uh, I remember in my interview, the CEO actually asked me, he looked right at me and he said, where are you going to be in five years? And I was, you know, interviewing for this low level sales position. And I said, I looked him right in the eye and said, in two, I'm going to be your VP of sales. And I didn't even know that was going to come out of my mouth. And I'm sitting there shaking, you know, like palm sweating. Um, and he was like, hmm, Okay. And he promoted me to that position after right around four months of being with the company. Uh, and, you know, everything changed. But it changed because I worked around the clock. You know, I came in, I was so devoted, so eager, so determined to make something of myself and the opportunities that I was given that, thank God, he noticed and gave me an opportunity that 
you know, I probably was not qualified for, but I sure learned. <laughs> but that, that's powerful. That's what what I want women to hear right now, right, is you stayed focused on just give me the chin. It's about setting your intention, but we still have to do the work. And you did the work. You showed up. You believed that this was going to be your foundation to a better life, and then you took action and um, – the results Absolutely. that came, you created. They weren't magically Absolutely. handed to you. And yeah. when we come back in from our break, Sarah, I want to talk about how that one moment tr- transformed your life as you, you know, you began to be able to provide yeah. such a better life for your children, and then how it led you to this powerful transformational work that you're now doing. And I we'll, you, yeah, we'll be back in a moment. I'm with Sarah Centrella of sarahcentrella.com. A conscious lifestyle for a mindful life. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Inspiration for a woman's soul. Aspire Magazine. Inspiring and supporting women on the path of self-discovery. Claim your free digital subscription today, which includes access to thousands of dollars of personal development bonus gifts from Team Inspiration Partners. Claim your Aspire Magazine subscription today at subscribetoaspire.com. Are you trying to get from point A to point B and need a little advice? Connect with the counselors at Ohm Times Advisors. Whether you're looking for a life coach or a spiritual intuitive, the advisors participating at advisors.ohmtimes.com were carefully chosen based on their gifts, skills, and professionalism. Ohm Times Advisors, connecting you with the best advisors in the business. Do you have time to read that inspiring book or that blog post you've been meaning to get to? In your busy world, how do you improve yourself and keep your life going? I'm Lisa Kay, and my Between Heaven and Earth radio show can transform your life just by listening. Be uplifted with inspiring topics, positive stories, and ideas that really work. Between Heaven and Earth Radio is conscious living for your soul every Wednesday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Hey, America, we need to have a little talk. We've got more food than we know what to do with in this country, yet 17 million kids in America are struggling with hunger. Makes no sense. Luckily, the Feeding America Nationwide Network of Food Banks has volunteers gathering excess food and getting it to hungry kids. They're kind of like food angels. Hey, become a food angel yourself by supporting Feeding America in your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. We can't do it without your help. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. This is OTRFM, part of the IOM Radio Network. Welcome back. You're listening to Inspired Conversations. I'm your host, Linda Joy, and with me today is Sarah Centrella, the author of the number one bestseller, Hustle, Believe, Receive, an eight-step plan to changing your life and living your dreams. So, Sarah, when you got that job and you worked your way up over the seven years that you were there, it must have been almost like a completely different world for you and your children. You were able to give them experiences that exceeded your wildest dreams. So tell us how your internal belief system started to change also. Oh, absolutely. And I, and I just want to say, um, to, to parlay off what you were speaking of before our break, um, it, it is really about the work. And so I applaud you for bringing that up and recognizing that because I think that's one of the biggest misconceptions out there about manifesting is that people think you don't have to do anything. And it couldn't be more untrue. You know, you really do have to put in the effort. Um, and I actually was in that position for right around two years and then wound up you know, moving up in my career uh, as I as I went through different positions, but um, it has dramatically changed my life and my family's life. Um, you know, I was in the amazing opportunity this last fall to take my children to Italy, which was a lifelong dream that I've had since I was you know 17 years old. Um, so to be able to, and I've had that on my board and in the back of my mind for literally since you know, I was 17, 18 years old. Um, so to be able to take them and, you know, see my kids play but is an amazing feeling. And for all the women out there who are hearing this, like, it really is something that you can absolutely create the life that you want. And it does take time to change those belief systems. So you're 
question, Linda Joy. It's, it isn't something that is overnight. You know, in the beginning, when you're coming from a poverty mindset and you're trying to change to what is possible, it takes diligence on your part to check your thoughts, to replace your thoughts uh, with positive ones and to focus on where you want to go instead of where you're at. All of that takes work and all of that has um, I've learned over time, you know, by trial and error. And I don't want to say perfected over time, but I'm learning. <laughs> um, I think it's a continual about process. Yeah. yeah. It is I continual. It is. I think it's lifelong. Yeah, it's lifelong. And for when did this whole idea of hustle, believe, receive, and the concept of the book come to be? Is it was it are these eight principles based on the principles that you use, the plan and strategies that you use to change your life? They absolutely are. Uh, and so it kind of came, you know, back at that first job, I started blogging because I really didn't have a network of uh, people around me and, and I needed to kind of put something out, you know, get stuff off my chest. So I started blogging and I started uh, sharing my story and then kind of testing out uh, some self-help concepts if they would work for me. So I put up my future board. Um, I call it a future board, vision board. Um, and then started manifesting really quickly. And when that started happening, I thought, well, wait a minute, how am I doing that? <laughs> Pause. I want to know how, because I want to rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. You know, I want to continue to do it. Um, so all of that, I was really putting out on the blog on a regular basis, which uh, built this international uh group of amazing people who had kind of been watching this journey and they would ask me, what are you doing? What are you doing that's different than what other people have done? And the hustle is a big part of it. That was the biggest part that I didn't see a lot of, um, I guess, teachings out there on how to work for it. <laughs> there was a lot about how to dream about it and close your eyes and wake up in it. But I thought, I'm kind of a control freak and I need to know how, <laughs> how do we do this? what can I do today instead of just sitting here and thinking about it? Like, what can I do to get closer to it? Um, and so when I sat down to write the book, I literally had it all on a napkin and was writing down like what I did and put them in order. And I thought, you know, it really has to start with a dream. So that's step one. It has to start with, you have to have motivation to go somewhere. Right. So yes. for me, my dream was, I wanted to build the type of life where I could travel with my kids. That was bottom line. <clears throat> that was like magna cum laude. <laughs> if I can travel with my kids, then that means a lot of other things are probably going right in my life at that point. So I started with that huge, impossible dream, you know, back when I'm still on food stamps. Uh, and then kind of backed it out from there and made, uh, wrote down plans and goals and uh, focused on them and changed how I was thinking about my life, my future, and who I was, and all of those steps are in the book. Um, so not only did it work for me, but that's what I've been coaching through my blog for many years, uh, but then I thought, oh, well, who am I? No one's going to listen to me, right? I'm a, I'm a single mom. No one's going to listen to me. So I went out and I interviewed 51 successful people in every field I could think of. So we have MBA players, we have fashion designers, and CEOs, and all these different people. And I said, just tell me your story. Tell me how you got where you're at. And uh, through the course of their story, these eight steps would show up in every story. And that's when I was really like, okay, <laughs> this isn't just me. And if I can put a formula together that people can just literally plop in their life and apply, um, then some amazing things can happen. That's exactly what's happened through the course of the last year and a half is watching people really here's the thing that I really caught in your story some people would have had the idea I'm going to interview 51 people and, and ask them how they changed their lives where you and I I think and many others that get it we you took inspired action and actually picked up the mm -hmm. phone and started the ball rolling some people have the idea yep. to change their lives and when the idea I believe that it drops down from the divine right when we're quiet yep. yeah or bubbles up from our inner wisdom, whatever language best suits you. We all get that every moment of every day. But if you don't yeah. take action on it, life can't change. And you took action on it because that was a brilliant idea. And most people would have frozen and said, who am I to call those people or ask those people? Right. So you I have this little, you have this point, like, yeah. chutzpah. <laughs> right. 
<laughs> it's, it's such a good point because to me, the definition of manifesting is not something just showing up randomly, randomly in your life. To me, it comes at a couple stages before that. The first one being a quote idea, right? But, and people think, oh, that was just random. I just randomly thought of that. Well, no, you didn't. If you put it out into the world, like the idea will come to you. And that is like the first kind of form of manifestation. Then it's up to you to do exactly what you said, take action and do something about it. And I think for me, whenever I've uh, had something where I was like, I mean, you know, when you have an idea that is when you just would be stupid to ignore, you know, you have this just like energy that, that goes through your body. And you're like, ah, but, you know, this is kind of what I've been waiting for. And I've been able to, to see that when I mix that with hustle, which is getting out there and doing it, and then also saying it. So I put it out there. I put it on social media. I said, who's the most successful person you know? Tell me their name. I'm calling them up. Um, I wound up getting many people from the book that way. So almost every single po person I interviewed in the book, I either knew personally or there was one degree of separation from me which is amazing. We have Russell Simmons, you know, who's, who's one degree of separation from me, who I wound up meeting through this process. Um, so people I never would have ever known and, and ever had this opportunity had I just sat there and thought, oh, that would have been cool. You know, so you're, you're so right in that when an opportunity comes to you, it feels different and it feels a little scary because it never doesn't feel scary. <laughs> it always feels a little scary. Um, it is up to you to see it through. And then the universe does some really amazing things. It shifts things around to control what you can't. But I, I totally believe that we have to do what's within our control and move towards what we want to make it happen. Oh, I so agree. So if dream is number one, name a few of the other steps, Sarah. Yeah. So the second one I think is probably the most critical, important one of all. It was definitely the number one step that changed everything in my life. Um, and that is think it. So we've all heard, you know, change your thoughts and you'll change your life and all these other kind of great things. But I had no idea how to do that. <laughs> it was like, how do I control what's going on in my head? I really, you know, I'd gotten to the age of 33 and had no idea that we really could change what was bouncing around in our brain. And once I started looking at what I was thinking about all day, then it made total sense why my life had become a train wreck. I was like, oh, literally everything I stress about and spent all my days thinking about is exactly what happened. So I almost started this kind of upside down in a way that I needed proof. I'm a very tangible person. I need things to make logical sense to me. Um, and so I started that way. I started backing it out through my past outcomes and what I was thinking. And it was just clear as day. There was absolutely no denying it. And then I thought, well, if that's true, the reverse has to be true. So I'm going to figure out how I stop thinking those thoughts ever again. And of course, you know, it's like we were saying, it's never a, a once and you're done situation. It is a lifelong journey. But I came up with three very simple and basic ways that anybody can change their thoughts and can recognize what they're thinking and then shift it to what they want. And when you do that, your life changes. It's really, really amazing to watch, especially somebody who is um, used to negative self-talk, which all of us are by nature, I think. Um, and to see them shift, it's, it's life-changing. I'm telling you, when I coach my clients in that one step, they go through this I had one client say it was almost like a war. He went through a total mental war for about a week and a half. And when he came out, he just felt like a completely different person. I mean, you learned so much about yourself when you're analyzing your thoughts and learning how to change them. So that's a big one. Um, a couple of other ones. Uh, the next one to that is say it. So everything we say is a reflection of what we want in our life. Um, and kind of tangibly, how do you change that? And uh, then another one is write it making an actual written plan, putting our thoughts on paper. And then the big one that everyone loves is uh, for step five, I teach people how to create what I call a future board because I think words matter. And so to me, it is an absolute uh, picture of what my future is going to look like. It's not a dream. It's not just a vision. It's not, you know, pie in the sky. It is a visual representation of the life I'm actively creating. So I teach all my secrets on how to do that and uh, that's that. And that's 
Well, like I love the think it one, and I want to talk about more about that when we come back from our break because that was the critical one for me. The moment I realized back in 1991 that I had a choice of the thoughts I was thinking, right? Because I, I like you, it sounds, I believed these thoughts come, I can't do anything about them. And yeah. when I had the realization that the choice was mine, which thoughts I focused on, that changed my entire life. So when we come back, let's dive a little deeper into some of the strategies you used um, to change your thoughts. And this is Linda Joy. You're listening to Inspired Conversation. And with me today is Sarah Centrella. And we'll be back in a moment. Free your mind. Expand your soul. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Are you ready to manifest the life of your dreams? Do you often wonder why it hasn't happened yet? When you are in alignment with your deepest desires, you have unlimited power to manifest more wealth, better health, and happiness. By using a unique formula and proven process to help you create higher levels of energy in the moment and long term, at the Wealth Attraction Academy, you'll discover the support you need to help you do just that. The Wealth Attraction Academy was founded by seven-figure business owner, international best-selling author, speaker, coach, and Aspire Magazine expert columnist, Anne Sanfilippo. Anne's mission is to provide women like you with the tools and resources you need to manifest an abundant life of your dreams financially, emotionally, and spiritually. Visit WealthAttractionAcademy.com to claim your free Attract Wealth, Health, and Happiness gift set and schedule a free discovery session today. Ohm Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Ohm Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Hi everyone, this is Shay Parker, the host of Best of the Best, which airs live right here on IOM Radio every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern and 5 p.m. Pacific. I'm super excited to bring you expert guest hosts, spiritual discussions, free psychic readings, and so much more. I can promise that you will not want to miss this one-of-a-kind, fun, yet touching, down-to-earth show. Join us every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. Pacific on OTRFM. This is Shay Parker, and I can't wait to see you there. The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. A conscious lifestyle for a mindful life. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Welcome back. You're listening to Inspired Conversations. I am your host, Linda Joy. With me today is Sarah Centrella of sarahcentrella.com. So Sarah, right before the break, you mentioned uh, step two, which is think it. And that that's a, a one that yourself, as well as all your clients, really get a, a big breakthrough mm-hmm. on. And so many people, I agree, they believe that, oh, my God, these are my thoughts. I can't do anything to change them. Right. I thought that for so long. But Absolutely. I had no idea. I had literally had no idea. I feel kind of dumb looking back now, but I had no idea that we controlled what kind of bangs around in our brain all day. And and like you just said, like once, once you realize that, it's super heavy. It, it can really be a lot to take in because uh then you realize like you really did have a lot of control over what was going on in your life even if and it kind of really gets rid of the victim mentality because you can't really be a victim if you're putting out something into the universe and then getting it back so um it it helped me a lot anyway i will, I will say that for myself to take responsibility for my life to see where my life was at and then the most empowering part of Think It is that now I could do something about it. I could actually change my future outcomes. So you go through that first part of, of feeling overwhelmed and 
almost wanting to beat yourself up for where you have and then you move right through that and say wow now I am in control and I can change it um and you had asked uh, kind of before the break what some of the ways that I teach people to do that and um I have a couple I have three different uh tools that I share with clients and that's in the book um on actually how to do this and one of them I call mental tennis so I imagine that those negative thoughts are coming to me rapid fire like as you know you're on the tennis court and the balls are like coming at you um and they could be like oh I'm fat I'm broke I'm tired I'm whatever all these things we stress about and the trick is you literally turn it you just hit it back you don't receive it you don't take it you hit it back um and you tell yourself the opposite you say I'm healthy I'm energized I'm strong I am whatever and your brain at first wants to say, that's a lie, time out, <laughs> you know, I don't buy it. And you literally just keep repeating it until you can change the subject and your brain starts thinking about something else. So it's a very, I guess, tactical way of recognizing, first of all, what you are thinking, because I, I think that's a big part of it. Most people don't even know what they're thinking about all day, uh, recognizing it and then reversing it. So instead of thinking about where you're currently at or what you currently don't like, you realize that those thoughts create more of that and you don't want that. So you put out into the universe what you do want, the outcome you do want. Even if it isn't reality right now, even if it doesn't feel authentic right now, you are still putting out into the universe the outcome you want. And that's what you're starting to focus on. And that changes everything. Really it truly does. Awesome. And, and, and something you said a moment ago, I remember being there when I when I realized I had the choice to choose which thoughts I was going to have, positive and negative, I remember being upset with myself, like, oh, my God, you wasted so many years. But then I, I, this loving voice from within said, you weren't aware, so you can't judge or condemn yourself. But now, here's the big thing, now that you were aware and an empowered Amen to that. I think as Maya Angelou said, when you know better, you do better. Yeah. Uh, so that first part of, I use uh, a week for each of my clients that I coach on each step. So the first part of that week when clients are really feeling the weight of kind of what you just said, like, oh, I want to beat myself up. We just repeat that as our motto. When you know better, you do better. And it really does help you kind of forgive the past, let your past decisions go, because now you do see so clearly that you didn't know right? You didn't know what you know today. And, and then that other piece really comes in, which is total pure empowerment, which feels awesome. <laughs> yeah, it does. Because from that place of empowerment, um, that's where we can make the right choices. And one of the tips, one of the strategies, I guess I had to use, and I can't remember, it was probably some personal development book could have been Louise Hay, I picked up, I've been on this path for a long time. So probably back in the early 90s, and I had to try, like you did, to catch the thought because I was just so used to letting them come, right? But now once we have this awareness, we want to consciously be aware of what we're thinking. So I would feel a negative thought come up, whether it was about my life, my weight, my job, whatever, you know, as we can be, right? If I felt it come up, let's say it was Oh my God, I'm not going to make the rent this month. That was a that was right. a common one back then. Right, right. <laughs> and I would say, hear myself say it or feel it, and I'd go cancel, cancel. Uh, you know, I will make the rent with ease and grace this month. So I would always yeah. hit cancel, cancel because for me, I'm a visual person. I would see mm-hmm. a big, you know, board in my mind and erase it. I that's how I started because I had to become aware of the thought, yep. have a, have a little ritual to change it. And now, and I, I'm curious about with you, Sarah, and the feedback from your clients, where we had to consciously think in the past how to shift our thought. Do you notice now that if a fear-based thought or a yucky thought comes up, we can notice it so much quicker now and just shift our energy immediately? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's it's so funny. It's uh you know, I think before the break, we were kind of talking about what it's like to start your business. And so you go through all these fears and all these doubts that want to come up. And, you know, thank God I've been practicing this uh, for the last six or seven years. And you do. You, It's just like anything else. I kind of liken it to working out with a trainer. You know, the first week or two really sucks. 
Um, and then after that, you start to feel a little bit better. And then, you know, if you stick with it for six months or something, you're a different person. And, you know, I can't pay you to not go to the gym, right? So that's exactly what happens to our brain. That first like two weeks can be brutal. And I tell clients straight up front, I'm like, get ready. This is not going to be pretty. <laughs> it's not going to be fun. But when you get through that, um, and one of the other tricks, uh, so mental tennis is one. The other one that I call motto for life, um, I, I make people find an empowering motto that counteracts whatever their top five stressors are. Um, and for me, it was always like money and weight and kind of the base auto zone. It's, it's this kind of process that, you know, your brain wants to go down the rabbit hole. It sees the rabbit hole. <laughs> and then saying, God, your muscle on the other side that's been working all these years to build you up and knows that the rabbit hole will do damage says, nope, here's the outcome you want. Focus on the outcome you want. But I will say we all have bad days, right? And there'll be days when we want to wallow in self-pity or we want to feel sorry for ourselves or we want to go down there. And I've done it many times. <laughs> um, and it's, it's almost a fun experiment to do on yourself because it's crazy how it physically affects you. I mean, you'll get tired and cranky and um, literally physically look and feel miserable. And it's just, but you'll, you will have noticed that in the beginning, it was just a thought. And then you fed that thought and you let the thought fester and then it turned to a stomach ache. And then, you know, so once you do it more and more and more, you really recognize the first thought that's about to take you down a path and it's up to you to change it. So you can let it go and, you know, it's not going to solve the problem. It'll just make you feel worse and put more of that energy into your life. It's so true. It's funny when you said motto, I look up at my monitor, my computer monitor, and for probably for a good six years, because as you said a moment ago, we all have fears, right? Whether it's launching a new business, new relationship, money, it doesn't matter what it is. It's part of the human experience. We can't get away from it, right? So I have on my computer, my dreams are stronger and more real than any false fears. And Ooh, it's my that. my yeah. reminder. And, I, and just so you know, I'm so visual that I put the word dreams, all capital, bold letters, and pretty purple. And I put the word. <laughs> I love it. I put the word fears in small, little, little letters in italics with, go, yeah. as an acronym to remember that fears are just false. And so I guess that yeah. would be my motto, right? That would be my sacred reminder to um, shift my thoughts Focus when. On what you want. Yeah. Yes, when Focus fear and self want, don't not come. What you don't. Yeah, exactly. And I, I always say fear is the enemy of success because this job is really to get up there and just block you. No, 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 you can't, you can't, you can't give you all these reasons. And it has, it has a positive component in a way in that it makes you, you know, really look at what you want and question it, vet it out a little bit. But if you get stuck there, it's throwing a party, right? It's like, yay, I sabotaged you. So I think focusing, making those dreams bigger. And that's why uh, to me, future boards are so important. I'm actually in my office right now looking at five future boards do you <laughs> make them one on for wall. each category um i have my master one which is the same physical board that i've had uh since kind of day one i update it about annually because i've manifested four boards literally about 90 percent of four separate boards have manifested in my life um and so that's kind of my master one it has all five categories of my life represented on it um you know finance family travel, passion, career, things like that. And then um, I just love them so much <laughs> that I have uh, I have one that's kind of career, a little bit more career focused, um, one that's all travel because that's the big, uh, huge dream for me. And um, one kind of more relationship family oriented. So those were the ones I really wanted to build out kind of extra this year. Uh, but the initial one that I train clients on how to do is that first one that represents all five areas of your life to be a holistic life upgrade. Well, well Sarah, when we come back from our break, from our final break, I want you to share one, the one thing listeners can do today that will begin to change their lives. And we'll, I'll be back in a moment with Sarah Centrella, the author of the best-selling self-help book, Hustle, Believe, Receive, an eight-step plan to changing your life and living your dream. We'll be back in a moment. A conscious lifestyle for a mindful life. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. 
What if you could live the life of your dreams, the life that you came here to live? What if you were able to honor your gifts and passions, turn them into a heart-centered business, and make a big difference in the world, all while living authentically and doing the work you love? It is possible. Patricia Young, president and founder of InnerProsperityAcademy.com, knows that awakening to your own truth, aligning with your life purpose, and having your own business is one of the most exciting and courageous things you will ever do in your life. Patricia helps spiritual, sensitive, and growth-oriented women start, grow, or transition into a business they love so they can go from working for a paycheck to working for a mission. For supportive resources, programs, and more to help you do just that, visit InnerProsperityAcademy.com. Are you trying to get from point A to point B and need a little advice? Connect with the counselors at Ohm Times Advisors. Whether you're looking for a life coach or a spiritual intuitive, the advisors participating at advisors.ohmtimes.com were carefully chosen based on their gifts, skills, and professionalism. Me. A cat moving in with a new human. It took a little getting used to. She has these weird games she likes to play, like this giant feather. She sticks it in my face. I swat it away. She sticks it in my face. I swat it away. It's almost like she thinks I enjoy it. But seeing how much fun she gets out of it, well, I guess it makes it all worth it. Humans. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person. Adopt. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the ShelterPetProject.org. <laughs> A conscious lifestyle for a mindful life. Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM. You're listening to Inspired Conversations. With me today is Sarah Centrella of sarahcentrella.com. So Sarah, there's, you shared so many juicy tips. If, if someone said, I, I just want one thing, what is one thing they can do right now that they can begin today that will change yeah. their life? The number one thing that you can do that literally on its own will begin to change your life today is to stop focusing on what you don't want, don't like, whatever, and shift that every single time to what you want. So instead of thinking about, oh, you know, I don't like my weight or whatever, you only focus about or only think about what you will look like when you're healthy. So you replace it, replace it, replace it, and be diligent. Um, and the rule of thumb is, if I focus on it, it's coming to me. So remember that. <laughs> that can be a scary one, you know, but sometimes that works. To think like, oh, if I'm sitting here worrying about money, what I'm asking the universe to do is, please bring more broke to me. I'm begging you, bring me more broke. So if you get that concept, even at any type of level today, even if it's just uh, huh, I wonder if maybe, please, please, please let that grow. And please, every time you are tempted to focus on what you don't like about your life or your current situation, force yourself, no matter how unrealistic it feels, to shift to where you want to go, which then begs the question, where do you want to go? <laughs> yeah, so then knowing and starting to decide where yeah. you want to go. And that's where the vision board, the master vision board comes in. Yeah, it's it's actually, that's, Step one for me, dream it. So we start there because we start, we want the end result to be very clear so that we have motivation to, to want to change our thoughts, to want to change our life. Um, so the outcome has to be good. And the first thing that I have people do, um, and your listeners can actually go do this. I just posted a brand new one on uh, sarahcentrala.com. The homework for dream it, the very first homework assignment is to create a bucket list. Um, I do it a little bit different with some different instructions. Those are all the homework and instructions are in there too. Um, but that's the one thing that just really starts to free you. It really helps you get rid of all the reasons why you can't do something. Um, it shows you what those reasons are, like if it's money or if it's fear, whatever, those come right to the surface. And then it helps you see like, wow, life could be kind of whatever I wanted it to be. And it is all based on experiences, not things you can buy and not goals, but the actual life you want to live and who you want to live it with and what you want to do in your life. So that's step one for us. Um, but the one thing anyone can do literally as soon as they're done listening to this is shift their focus. Do that and you put all the eight steps together and then you're, you know, then you're unstoppable. But <laughs> if you do that one, you're going to see major results. 
Well, it's a big shift. It's like focusing. I, I, for me, it's a gratitude practice, which is pretty, mm-hmm. pretty similar, right? It's yeah, just focus, Linda. And I, I've shared this numerous times on shows over the years. When I first started that, it was again a personal self-help book I picked up 20 years ago. It said it said um, could have been Louise again, Louise Hay again. Yeah. Um, it said um, name five before you get out of bed in the morning. Name five things that you're grateful for. Well, you've been there, Sarah. There's times in yeah. my life I know I struggle to find five things. I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? I was in the you know victim mentality. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, I can't find five things. But I was so determined to even try. And at first it was like, well, thank God the hot coffee only spilled in my pants and not right. my new shirt, you know? And right. But I stuck with it. And yep. it's, it's it was powerful. Absolutely. It changed my heart. Yeah. They have to understand really what gratitude is. And a lot of people, including myself, didn't know. But especially if you're listening to audio books, um, it's harder to kind of sit down and, and get all the steps to the homework. So this actually has some updated homework, too, based on all the coaching I've done the last uh, two years since the book was written. And uh, the journal, because journaling is a big part, I believe, in in recreating your story and rewriting your story. So that just came out. You can get that uh, on my website in either an e- uh, ebook form or the bound version. So it's your companion um, to help you write your own story, your new story. And then I'm doing a lot of events. So I'm actually traveling the country and the world. I have uh, two big events coming up, one in Denmark and one in Germany, um, to teach people how to build my uh, future boards because they really are different than any ones I've ever seen out there. And they absolutely manifest. We have so much proof. Feel free to check out the testimonials and what people are saying on the website um, because it really works. It didn't just work for me. It's changing lives dramatically every day. So I'm, if you guys want one of those, I'd be happy to come even to your house and do one for your girlfriends because um, I'm having so much fun getting out and meeting everyone. You know what I love? It's so true. Um, vision board is a different energy than future board, just even here in the words, right? Vision means it's still out there where future right. is like you're claiming it as already yours. I'm telling you, words matter. <laughs> yeah, I can feel it. Absolutely. Fe- I, um, and you're right. I've never heard anyone use that, but I can feel it in my body, the energetic difference. Doesn't it make a huge difference? And I hate it when people call them dream boards, too. Cause then, that, then that gives it no power. It's like, oh, that's just, you know, oh, wouldn't that be great? So, no, we yeah. it's totally different. And that's why it comes in step five. We actually don't do that until we're almost, you know, halfway done with the steps because you have to lay the foundation you have to define your dream first. You have to change how you're thinking about it. So by the time you get to the board, which would have felt very fake and unrealistic had we started with it in the beginning, um, by the time you get to the board, you're super excited because you finally get to see what the life is looking like that you've already done all this work on. Um, and then by the time we get to step seven, which is believe it, you already believe. It's like, whatever. <laughs> so it, it really kind of the way that we work through the steps um, takes away the possibility of doubt and failure. It really does just kind of in a natural way, and you learn a lot about yourself. And I love that you have them do the inner work first before they get to it, because if they started there, their belief system wouldn't wouldn't hold on to it, wouldn't envision it. Yeah, and also they would they would put all uh, material things on the board, which is what everyone does, because that's what people think vision boards are all about. Um, and we don't take that approach at all. <clears throat> We're trying to build a life. We don't want to buy a thing. We want to build a whole life. You want to build experiences, feelings, emotions, yes. right? Memories. Yeah. We want we. This is literally like the equation: work hard, play hard. We're building a life that is a play hard life. You know, it's the type of life that people literally only dream about and think that they could never, ever have. So they don't even think about it. They've just decided they're in a box. They're happy in the box. And I come along and I'm like, oh, that box doesn't exist. (laughs) Because it doesn't. I mean, what I've lived out over the last seven years, I mean, I've flown on private jets. But like I said, took my kids to Italy and I've, you know, traveled with my son all over to New York last year and that court side of the NBA game. I mean, the life that we've lived over the last seven years, and it doesn't mean I'm a millionaire because I'm definitely, you know, one day hope to be there. <laughs> but these moments have shown up in my life long before I could ever even have afforded them. Many of them I didn't 
pay a dime for. So, but that's what that's what true open. manifesting is is that you were dreaming of experiences and feelings for you and your family, and they're coming to you. Even yep. if your financial means don't yet meet it, you're aligning with the energy, and you're, that means your financial means will one day meet it. Yep, exactly, and that's what most people don't understand about it, and so they go about it totally backwards, really. And so, and you know, it's not wrong. It's just I, I think I finally realized like this is how it works. <laughs> we go about it in the right way that's aligned with what we truly want, that's holistic in our life. And we're building a life that's based on moments we want to live with people we love. And isn't that what all of us want at the end of the day? Exactly. We want that more than we want anything. We want that more than we want a successful career. We want it more than we want a huge mansion. We want the life. And that's what I teach people how to create is the life of your dreams, living your dreams. I think you just said it all. You just wrapped up our conversation <laughs> beautifully. Sarah, it, uh, it's been so much fun, Linda Joy. Yeah, it's been a pleasure to have you here. I love the work you're doing in the world. Happy to support you in getting this powerful message out. And thank you for being courageous enough to share your truth, share your story, So, because it's an inspiration to other women who may be struggling right now. So thank you. Well, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity. It's been a joy. Well, everyone, until next time, choose love, choose joy, choose happiness. Blessings. Thanks for listening to Inspired Conversations with publisher Linda Joy. Join our sacred space every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern and meet leading female visionaries, empowering authors, heart-centered female entrepreneurs, coaches, and healers. Inspired Conversations with Linda Joy is a soulful venue where guests share the obstacles they've overcome along with wisdom and lessons learned on their personal journey that led them to the transformational work they do in the world. Inspired conversations to empower you on your path to authentic and soulful living.